Okay, so we're going to start over here with the science experiments. Day one is um, ready, set, go before Babel. So the first one that you're doing is light it up. You're going to make a plant-powered battery since they're talking about the Garden of Eden. This one's a little hard, though. Um, so I use lemons, and you're going to need test leads with the alligator clips on them. Um, here's your super fun tip. You can get them on Amazon. A 30-pack is like $8. You need pennies. If you Google it, some will say that the penny has to be before 1982 because of the amount of copper in it. It didn't really make much of a difference for me. And then you need, it says zinc galvanized nails. If you call a hardware store, they're not gonna know what you're talking about when you ask for zinc galvanized nails. Um, but it's how they're coated and just a regular nail is a zinc galvanized nail. So these are from Walmart for like three bucks for a box of, uh, it's a pound. So there's a lot of nails in there. So you're going to take your lemon, the adult with the knife is going to slice in the lemon, stick the penny in, and then you're going to put the nail, the kids can put, if you trust them, maybe not the boys, but you're going to put the nail in the lemon, and you're going to do two of them. So you have two lemons, or you can do grapefruit, it said kiwi, you can do potatoes, but both of them are going to have a nail and a penny in there. And then you're going to hook them up with the test leads and not pull the pennies out. But penny is going to go to nail, so you're doing zinc to copper. Then you're going to take each, each group that does this will need three of these. So then you hook up to the penny with another one. Then you're going to take another one and hook up to there. And this is where you're going to want to hook your two ends to an LED. Again, Amazon's your place. They are going to come in a multicolored pack. It's a little light bulb with a little prong as I throw it. And you're going to hook up the ends of the alligator clips to the light. OK, here's where the practical part comes in. It doesn't really work. Um, lemons don't have enough whatever it is in them. I'm not a science person, but to make the LEDs light up. I don't know if maybe a different kind of LED, but the basic like 100 pack from Amazon doesn't make it light up. However. They sell these really cool clocks, and the clocks do make them light up. Um, I had one that I could have shown you, but I broke it as soon as I got here. I snipped the wire off. Um, but the clock does. It is enough to power a clock. Um, but I was not able with even five lemons and then a combination of lemons and grapefruits and potatoes. It was not enough to make these LEDs light up. But the clock is still really cool for the kids to see. The other experiment for day one is let it rain. So they're talking about the rainforest in your country, South America. And you're going to give them a cup of water and some shaving cream. Again, warn the boys. I work with kids. They're going to want to play in the shaving cream. But they're going to spray a thin layer on top. Then you're going to give them food coloring. And they can make guesses on how many drops it's going to take to reach down into the water. So depending on how many drops is how long it will go. Or if you let it sit. I did a really thick layer before and it sat for a good three hours and it's slowly dripping down. So you can let them do different colors or you can just stick with blue for rain. Day two's experiment, you're talking about the spreading of the gospel. Um, so they're making things that will fly. The first one is a paper airplane. Your kids might know how to do it. Um, they give you a link to a place um, in the guide that you can pay and get templates. You can also like Pinterest if you don't know how to fold a paper airplane like myself and get it. Um, they make some cool ones that you can like color in. So you can let the kids get really creative and then fly paper airplanes around the room. And the other one is called Full of Hot Air and they're gonna make their kind of own hot air balloon. So we'll see if I can do this here if my water's still hot. You're gonna take a bottle and a balloon, put the balloon on the bottle. Then you're going to get tap water that's hot, as hot as tap water as you can get. And stick the balloon in there and with the bottle. And it should kind of get some air in it. My water might not be hot enough still. And it also said you might need to play around with the thickness of your balloons. And then after that happens, you're going to stick it in the cold water. And it should work, but I don't think my water's cold enough or hot enough by now. So that's day two. Day three, you're going to be talking about DNA. That's the day when um, they're focusing on how we're all different shades, but we're all one family. So 
you kind of almost have three experiments today. The first one uses coffee filters that you're gonna cut into strips. You're gonna put a dot about an inch from the end. It's gonna get taped onto a straw and put in a glass of water. It didn't like my blue this morning, so you might wanna test, it says darker colors, but it didn't like this morning's blue. So you're gonna put it where the coffee filter touches the water, but the dot doesn't touch the water, and it's gonna absorb up through, and then it's gonna make the pigment separate, and you'll get a different color. Similarly, you're gonna do it with vegetables. So this was spinach that I pureed. So that's gonna be a blender. I decided not to bring a blender and make you listen to a blender this morning. So I did this at home and it's still fine in a, in a jar. So it says you can use carrots, you can use beets, anything with a really good color, um, but keep them separate because you wanna see the separate colors. So you're gonna put some in a glass, plastic glass or jar if you trust them. Then you're gonna let the kids or an adult pour in some rubbing alcohol to where it covers your vegetable mixture on the bottom. And then they're gonna, with the strip of coffee filter, you're gonna tape it onto a straw where the tip of it just touches down in the glass. And you're gonna let it sit there and then you'll watch it rise up through there. Then they're gonna be testing DNA with an onion. So this one's a little smelly. Again, you're gonna chop up, a leader is gonna chop up an onion and you're going to blend it with water. It uses like a cup and a half of water. Then the children can help, you're going to strain it. It's really smelly. So they wanna, you wanna pour the onion water juice mixture down in a cup or a jar. Then the kids are going to add a half a teaspoon of meat tenderizer with the onion juice. And then about two tablespoons of dish soap. And they're gonna stir that around and let that sit for about 10 minutes without really touching it. And then at the end of that, they'll be able to use a spoon and just lightly scrape off the DNA that comes apart from the onion. For day four, they're gonna be polishing pennies. Day four, I think, is my favorite science experiment. You wanna get kind of grubby pennies, not shiny ones, and give the kids different condiment cups full of stuff. Vinegar with salt, ketchup, I think one thing even said chocolate milk. You don't want everything to necessarily work really good at cleaning a pennies because you want them to experiment. Um, anything with the acidity in it's gonna work. Like that one was lemon juice. So it'll clean the pennies. And that's, this one's a really great tie into the gospel on forgiveness of sin. So I really like this one and it's fun for the little ones too. The other activity is rainbow float. It's gonna be talking about density. So you're gonna give them jars. I used a peanut butter jar. I am a true children's minister and I, if it can be used for a craft, I've got it in my basement saved. So peanut butter jars are great because they have a lid and it's plastic. But you're gonna give them some different materials to pour into a glass. You want dark colors and different colors so that the layers will show up. And as you pour them in, doesn't matter what order. This one, maple syrup, dish soap. You can also food color stuff, like your dish soap, you could add some food coloring in to give some difference of colors. But as the mixture sits there, the liquids with the most density are going to float to the top or the bottom and give you really cool layers. This is, there's light corn syrup, there's dark corn syrup, but you wanna four or five at least different liquids so they have a cool jar. If you let them take it home, I really recommend strong duct tape and, and glue on the lids because this is not just oil and water, it's sticky stuff. But they could even shake it gently and then all the layers will separate. Day five, talking about going and spreading the gospel. First, they're gonna be making a compass and go. Um, last year, I think, we used Pringle containers. So Pringle lids make a really great container lid for this experiment. You're gonna put a little water in it. And then they're gonna get a small piece of cork 
If you're not dealing with a lot of kids, by the way, Walmart sells cork coasters for like 75 cents that you can cut up because they just need a small piece. You need metal magnets or metal paper clips and strong magnets. So the kids are going to go the same direction striking the metal paper clip. They can also write north, south, east, west on there on their plastic lid, but after they've kind of charged their metal magnet, their metal paper clip, they're gonna put it on the cork, and then it will face north. They're also, in going with the lesson of the Good Samaritan, the experiment is all bandaged up. They're gonna test different types of Band-Aids, and they can either use their own skin, or you could give them like boiled eggs or something, but they're gonna see which Band-Aid types stack up to being in water, who's gonna hold their adhesive the longest. 